thanks for joining our Project CAD 3D modeling webinar. My name is Noor and I work at CAD and I'll be showing a basic overview of the 3D functions of Project CAD. The basic interface of Project CAD contains the main menu at the top, draw and modify toolbars on the side. Now before we start we should open up some additional toolbars. You can select render, solids, solids editing, view, and shape. Now you've got the option to dock these anywhere within the workspace. You've also got the command toolbar, the command bar at the bottom. And it's very important that you pay attention to what is written in the command bar. And to stop the command, you simply press the escape button on your keyboard. ProjectCAD offers 3D tools to work in the X, Y, and Z axes. ProjectCAD drawings use the fixed coordinate system called the World Coordinate System or the WCS. And every point in the drawing has a specific x, y, and z coordinate. You can also define arbitrary coordinate systems located anywhere in 3D space. And these are called user coordinate systems, or the UCS. It's also a good idea to learn how to use the different view options. So we've got the view toolbar here. So you've got the top, bottom, and side views. You've also got the different isometric views. And you've also got the option to use the real time sphere, which gives you some shortcuts on how you can view your model. The project has supports the following types of 3D models. We've got the wireframe, we've got the surface, and we've got solids. A wireframe model consists of lines and curves that define edges of a 3D entity. Think of them as being the skeleton of a 3D object, which means they have no surfaces. I'm going to create two faces. I'm going to start by creating a square. Got one there. I'm going to copy the square. It's going to ask me for a point. I'm going to select a zero. Zero with 50 units in the z direction. It's going to ask me for a displacement point. Let's view this from a different angle. I'm going to then join up the edges of this shape here. Now I'm going to ensure that eSnap is on. Just make sure that the endpoint option is selected. So I'm just going to quickly join up these edges. Let's render this to see what we've got. As you can see, I haven't created any recognizable surfaces to Project CAD. They're empty lines. So wireframe models allow you to visualize the underlying design. However, because you've got to individually draw and position each entity, it can be time consuming. So let's have a look at surfaces. In Project CAD, surface models consist of both edges and surfaces between those edges. Surfaces are simply a polygon-based wireframe mesh. Project CAD allows you to work with surfaces in a number of ways. The first method involves applying a thickness to a 2D plane entity. So to start, I'm going to type in thickness. I'm going to type in 100 units. I'm going to create a polygon of five sides. And let's have a look at it from the side view. So there we have it. Now I then have the option to change to modify this. So let's change that to 20. And you can see that Project Cat has automatically updated that. So essentially, we've still got a 2D entity, but the line thickness here creates a recognizable surface mesh based approximation. So see what I mean after I've rendered it. The other option I've got is to work with the surface toolbar. I'm going to select the wedge option, create my base, enter a height of 20, and let's look at it from the side. If I render this, you can have a quick look that all the surfaces have been rendered. Just render that again from the side view. There you go. 
So this method is extremely quick and easy to model simple objects, but when you're working with surfaces, it can often be difficult to create more complex models required for manufacturing purposes. So that's why we might work with solids. 3D solids, which are 3D ACES entities that consist of faces and edges. ACES solids are true volumes and they're easier to work with than wireframe and surface models. So you've got the option to work with the extrude command. I'm going to create a shape here and then going to extrude it. I'm going to enter the height of 100. Let's go ask you for the angle of taper. Now, the taper can provide designers with a basic draft angle for their part if we are designing plastic parts for moulding. I'm going to enter an angle of 2. So as you can see from this, that the top part of the shape has been slightly tapered in. Now, the other option we have is to work with the solids toolbar. Now the solids that we have here are also referred to as primitives because we, we don't requ require any reference geometry. So I'm going to start by creating a cylinder. I'm going to create the radius there. It's going to ask me for the height of the cylinder. I'm going to select 50. I'm just going to tilt this slightly so you can see the cylinder there. I'm now going to create second cylinder based that's going to go inside this current one. So what I'm going to do is just going to make sure that I've got the center option ticked on there to create my cylinder. And I'm going to make sure that it's attached to the bottom, the base circle of this cylinder. going to ask me for a height. I'm going to specify the height of 100. And let's have a look at this shape. Actually, I might shade it in first to get a better option. And I might also add some colour in so we can see that a little bit better. Let's shade that again. So you can see we've got two shapes there. So this, I'm now going to work with the subtract command from solids editing. And this kind of Boolean volume addition and subtraction modeling is only possible using ACES solids and not our mesh objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this command. It's going to ask me to select, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to select the object to subtract from, which is the outer cylinder. I'm then going to press enter. It's then going to ask me the object to subtract. I'm going to press the inner cylinder. Press enter. There you go. So I've reshaded it, and as you can see, the, that inner cylinder has been removed. Now I'm going to show you some of the some of the editing functions that we have available. So we can take the we can open up the modifier toolbar and look at the fillet command. I'm going to select the entity that I want. Do that again. Fill command. Select the entity. Fill command. It's going to ask me for a fillet radius. I'm going to select five. Fillet radius of five. It's going to ask me for a. Ch I'm going to select chain. I've got my edge that I want highlighted there. And if I show you that again, you can see that it's just moved that outer edge for me there. I might just redo this function again with the inner circle there. 
So selecting my entity, my fillet radius, select chain, I'm going to select that inner radius there, so let's shade that, and as you can see, we've got that filleted. Now I'm just going to orientate this shape. around. And I'm going to show you the the shelling command. So it's going to ask me to select 3D solid. It's going to ask me to remove any of the faces I want. It's going to ask me for the offset distance. And if I reshape that, as you can see, it's pretty much removed the material from the inside of the entity. So if I quickly just render this shape for you, that's what it looks like. Now some of the disadvantages of working with solids um, are that it does mean a larger size, it does contain more information, so this may mean you may need better computer requirements. Some of the advantages, it's more precise than working with polygon mesh. You get true curves, arcs, splines and circles. You can also create more complex models faster using the boolean commands and you can send it to other CAD CAM programs to be translated and manufactured. So thanks for watching this 3D modelling tutorial for ProjectCAD. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and have a great day.